Hello everybody and welcome back to another bike commentary of uh, Ruby Volume 4. We'll be doing the World of Remnants Vale and um, the other one, um, Mist Mistral. So yeah, we're gonna get more information about the cities and this is gonna be quite high. I've been wondering about more world building and lore building, lore, and now we're gonna get more because these World of Remnants episodes have always been rather interesting little short snippets of information and I hope that this will be informative at the very least. And or at the very least we'll get to see the cities, so that's pretty cool. Now, without further ado, of course there's the outro, if you really do wish to skip to that. Um, but let's just get on with the show proper. Starting with Vale. Just so you all know. Well, <laughs> as you can see. Well, school's definitely out. But let's see if we can all learn a little something. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Remnant. Ooh. Not the best place to live, but depending on where. Not exactly as great of a voice as um, from the, the narrator from Bastion, but that's a pretty good, solid man voice as manly, deep throat voice as well. Yeah. Welcome to the world of Remnant, kids. You're staying. It can get a little easier. Wait a minute, that's just scroll. <laughs> I'm dumb. But that man, his voice is just just buttering my ears. You've got towns and villages that pop up as fast as they fall. The faunas have menagerie, but the sweet spots are Vale, Mistral, Atlas, and Vacuo. The four kingdoms okay. of the modern era. And oh each... right, there's there's not cities, they are talking about kingdoms. Right, right, right. I had completely forgotten about that. But that's just good to, good reminder about that, so yeah. One special in its own lip. But there's still like two more continents as you can see, so I wonder what their names are and what their importance is. This is at the very least raising raising quite a few more questions already. Let's talk about Veil. Vale. Also, I know it's been quite loud, so let me just put it quite a bit quieter. In the grand scheme of things, Vale's pretty well guarded. It rests on the northeastern end of the world's okay. largest continent, Sanus. Like most successful kingdoms, oh, it's Vale's Vale. survival over the years yeah. can mostly be attributed to prime real estate. Its front is protected by steep mountains, and its back is against waters too shallow for any real threat to pop out of. Not to okay. say I haven't heard some crazy... So there are, that's a, that's a pretty much a confirmation that there exist water monsters, or fa faunas, uh, not faunas, but the, um, Grimm, probably. Um, that's a pretty, Godzilla, there's pot potentially a Godzilla in this. Fish stories. Aside from the main city which the kingdom's named after. Vale territory also extends to several neighboring cities farther along the northwest coastline, as well as a small island named Patch. Oh. Nice place to raise a family, if you're okay. into that sort of thing. Of course, all attempts to extend the kingdom's reach past the mountains and farther into the mainland have been colossal failures. But, like I said, in the grand scheme of things, Vale ain't half bad. Regular climate natural barriers, and some hmm. serious border defenses means the citizens of Vale can spend less time worrying about survival. Regular climate, that's a rather important notice there, because we will be going to, or we will probably see climate changes this time around, like uh, different kinds of climates at the very least, maybe. Because we are getting away from the school setting, that means that we'll be, uh, we'll be able to explore quite a bit more different kinds of areas at the very least, I hope. And more time just living their lives. Of course, with the fall of Beacon, everyone's a little more worried these days. And they should be. That, that's a fun little information package there. Yeah, it's it, that. That's just a fun little information package. While not exactly as informed as, as I had hoped for, it's still does give enough of information for me to be satisfied with it. And then Mistral. <laughs> now we get to something a bit different, I believe. Right, where were we? 
The east of Samus is... Uh, apologies for that. This remnant's second largest landmass on it. That's where you'll find the kingdom of Mistral. Of the four kingdoms, Mistral has the most controlled territory. Oh. Meaning you'll find a wider variety of ecosystems and lifestyles. As I had hoped for, a different, very, very different type of city at the very least. Or kingdom, rather. Trust me, this place is something for everyone. For better or worse. The high society folks of Mistral are known worldwide for their contributions to fashion, architecture, theater. That actually does remind me of the um, episode of the Four Maidens. Actually kind of that art style, which I still do love this kind of really, very simplistic, I want to say. It's not simplistic, but you get this, like using stark colors like that. Just like one solid colors to represent characters like that. I just love this kind of art style here quite a bit. All the things that make the world pretty and tolerable. No, that's actually, that's an interesting point, like, like having maybe festivals with masks on, because masks usually have some kind of significant cultural meaning, so I wonder what exactly their purpose is. I know it's a random point, but it's just something that raises a question, if they are truly so cultured, like what kind of culture there is, that's something that I would like to see maybe going forwards, although that is unlikely. But it's lower class has got a fame of its own. Mistral's home to the biggest black market on the planet. Need something that's hard to find? Got someone that's hard to kill? They can help. Provided you've got the end to pay for it. There's okay. one common thread. I'm talking about criminal uh, under, underbelly of the cities, or the kingdom rather, is also rather important because that's something that we haven't seen all that much about, but we have seen quite a few instances of, of, of illegal activities. So it's really important to keep building on to that fact, like, a little bit. Even though it's unlikely that that will actually... I mean, <laughs> I mean, the previous season really did revolve around a few criminals, but it's still important to keep on building on that fact. So that it's not... it's reinforced that it's not a rare occurrence, but that it's rather usual for there to be criminals like there should be that links all these people together though and that's their respect for nature particularly the sea and the sky as i actually expected that they would have when they have like a huge lake in the middle of the continent that like that would build up some respect for nature because that seems like a really interesting design for a land continent like that Natural resources and geography of the area impacted Mistral's culture and technology in a big way. Its first settlers found shelter high up in the wind carved cliffs, and as their popular. Those airships look fantastical. Really fantastical. I kind of want to see them in motion, like in the actual series, then. So I know. I, I mean, I know we have known that there were airships. I think it was obvious that there were airships earlier, but still. Utilize land its potential. A real bunch of forward thinkers. Of course, the bigger the kingdom, the harder it is to govern. There's a reason traders and thieves flock to Mistral. The main city is right under the council's eye, sure, but places like Windpath. Kuchinashi start to get a little farther out of sight. Of okay, at the very least that's two named cities there. I would like more, but that's already two and that's good enough. Places to hide yeah, like Mistral seems like a really huge continent at the very least, so uh, I wonder how safe it is like in that kind of region there, like kind of far further away from everything, or if there even is any civilization there. That's why you gotta know where to look. Okay. Okay. That's that's it then. Well, if nothing else, these episodes at the very least gave me quite a lot of things to speculate about. As you can see from the episode being twice as long as the whole freaking videos were. But still. Um, they give quite a lot of realism to the world by making it seem like that they sit, every kingdom has their own culture and their own cities and way of doing things and how that they have developed quite differently from one another. Um, although we have only seen two, but I'm still just speculating about the last two other cities. 
I mean, it's really interesting, and it's certainly I would like to see more about Mistral because it just seems interesting and fantastical place, and I love culture, and I love when shows fantastical fantasy shows present new cultures. That's something that I really adore. So I would like to see more about Mistral, and. Just in general, I would like that the show would head more towards an exploration focused, a more, shall we say, varied locales, that it would move around, its scope, it would travel around the world, like it would move towards a travel series. Although, I don't know what's, what the, it has in store for us, but still, that's something that I would prefer. Nonetheless, it's still really good, and it's still rather ent entertaining, and it's... I love the art style so freaking much, though. Like ha having using one color to uh, color out the characters and just just I love the art style at the very least for these episodes quite a bit. Now I speculated so much during the episodes that I have very little to say else here. So thanks for watching. Have a great dance day, also. Gun move out. Thank you very much.